Um, you know, I, I've given some thought to this, guys, and and I think that when I look across the country, the, the team that I could still see finishing higher than expected is actually Texas Tech. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I say that because Chris Beard departs, and so now the rap is, well, are they going to be the same? Long-term, that's a question. But short-term, you still have – some of those main pieces that have had success and been a part of your success thus far down in Lubbock. So I look at the Red Raiders and I see a team that, that has a lot of guys that, that have been a part of their success trying to pull them up now in my, in my notes here, but you're talking about McCuller, uh, Shannon as well. O'Banner. like this, this is a team that has some of the key guys that have led them to wins And I think that just because there's a transition in coaching, a lot of people are going to start to write off the Red Raiders, and they might be surprised when Texas Tech is still playing a factor in the Big 12. So that's a team that I think is getting overlooked a little bit, and I think everybody talks about Kansas, Baylor, and Texas, and rightfully so. There's no question that those teams are the top teams in the Big 12, but I think that Texas Tech is still going to play a factor in this league because they do have some veteran talent, and they do have, a, look, a coaching staff that understands what it takes to win in the program based on the transition. It wasn't like this was a, you know, as much as Texas Tech hates to see Chris Beard go over to Austin, they still do have remnants of what made their program as good as it has been in recent years. So I would go with the Red Raiders. I think that they're getting ridden off a little bit nationally and, and heading into this year. That's probably the case, whereas a lot of people are higher on the Texas Longhorns and rightfully so, but don't forget about those Red Raiders just yet. Yeah, Texas Tech is – is they have a lot of talent coming in in terms of transfers, and it's a lot of guys that are kind of in that – like a similar vein to what Florida State is in terms of, dude, six foot six to six foot nine that are going to be versatile and positionless and all those buzzwords uh, when it comes to, to players right now. The one thing I will say about Mark Adams is this. He's 65 years old, and he's taking his first – high major head coaching job. Uh, but he's also Good kind of like the brains behind what Chris Beard has been doing. Like, so the no middle defense, the defense that, that Scott drew won a national title with last year, he basically stole from Chris Beard and the, the team that made it to the two was the 2019 national title game. And that defense was, I don't want to say created, but it was, it was kind of implemented and the brains behind it was Mark Adams who is the head coach of Texas Tech right now. He's won a ton at lower levels of basketball in Texas. He is a JUCO legend. I believe he is a – is he in the JUCO, the, the Texas Hall of Fame for junior college coaches? I, th- I think he might. I might be making that up. But um, he's he's a very, very, very smart coach. Uh, the one thing that I'm worried about is this. I think where Chris Beard's biggest strength is is kind of being the guy that brings everyone together, right? Like I think that he was so good at taking all of these different pieces – and molding them into a team and not just a group of players and not just a roster that's on a sheet of paper. Um, But I also think that that's kind of what Juco guys have to do every single year, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's Mark Adams spent 10 years at Howard college in Texas. He knows what it takes to have to take a bunch of guys that have never met each other before and turn them into a team that fits together. So I I agree with you, Fitz. I'm kind of bullish on, uh, on Texas tech. Um, T.O., who do you have as the most underranked team heading into the season? Underranked or overranked? What's the underranked. 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 Oh, Washington State, baby. Pullman, stand up. Kyle Smith is an excellent basketball coach. They're supremely talented in the front court. And I'm just going to throw it out there and try to pronounce this name. But first, Deshaun Jackson is an excellent five man. And then they have Ife Abojidi, who is an all freshman performer in the Pac 12. He's got excellent athleticism. He's about 6'10, 6'11, 250 pounds. Their rim protection is going to be elite. And then they have South Alabama transfer Michael Flowers coming up, who averaged over 21 points per game. He's excellent in ball screens, and he is wired to score, and he's really good at doing it off the dribble. He's going to work really well with those big guys. And then they also have Noah Williams coming back, who's a scoring 6'5", 6'6", guard who can shoot it from the perimeter. There's a lot of weapons and a lot of options uh, for the Cougars. And people are excited about Washington State basketball. There's, I, I don't know what all there is to do in Pullman. I've never been there. But there's going to be uh, some shows put on uh, at Washington State this year. And Kyle Smith's a head coach. A, just got an extension. 
Yeah, he did. There's not a lot to do up there. And I, lo- I love that you just give a shout out to F.A. Abo- F.A. Abogidi, I think is how you said it. Maybe it's Efi. I don't know. I have no idea how to pronounce it. Whatever he is, he's a stud. Yeah. Uh, whatever, however you pronounce it, he's a stud. He's really, really good. He, he's an absolute monster.